Season two of House of the Dragon is still filming, likely has a few more months to go. In fact, there's some pretty big filming happening in the middle of August, and we have so many leaks, rumors, casting, and just other things for season two. So definitely this video contains spoilers for season two of House of the Dragon. If you don't want spoilers, or you don't know your basic A Song of Ice and Fire, World of Ice and Fire history when it comes to Dance of the Dragons, just don't watch this video. For everyone else, let's talk about all the filming and what we're probably gonna see in season two. It's There's so much that's gonna be in season two. I'm just losing my mind thinking about it. But again, spoilers. Okay, so season two of House of the Dragon will pick up right where we left off. Rhaenyra is ready to get revenge and to get her thrown back through fire due to the Greens drawing first blood. So what is the aftermath of that? First, Daemon will give Rhaenyra some names for revenge, which I'll get back to, and then he ends up jetting off to Harrenhal to capture it. We have leaked audition tapes of a victorious but injured Daemon being taken care of by a woods witch named Alice Rivers, who claims to be the bastard of Lionel Strong. She ends up drugging Daemon and taunts him that he is his wife's errand boy and that his birthright was usurped by a girl. Just, you know, going in there with the knife, saying all the things she knows that are just going to trigger Daemon. And in fact, let me read the leaked casting script for that. Now, this isn't going to be a one-for-one -one dialogue of what's going to be in the show. A lot of times they give them dialogue, a script to read to see, okay, yeah, you you have what we want for this character. By the way, my uh, Daemon and Alice voice are just trash. You'll know I'm saying Daemon's line by the deeper voice and the more high-pitched will be Alice. I'm sure all of you know that, just wanted to clarify. So here we go. So Daemon is injured, Alice Rivers is tending to him and she has the first line saying, it's a touch late to be stalking about putting people to the sword. Hmm? Who are you? I'm Alice Rivers, a bastard. Oh gosh, if you get to know me, you'll find I'm not so bad. You some kind of physician? Mm-hmm. This castle's closest. I inherited the duties after the last one fled in the night. Fled? Why? Never settled in. How are you settling in? I've come to know the face of tortured rest well enough. Sleep can be so thin inside these walls. How would you know that? This place has been cursed since the first stone was laid. King Heron felled the grove of yew trees that grew in these lands. They say they are imbued with the spirits of those who lived long before he came. You can hear them whisper sometimes. Little boy's tales. Perhaps, perhaps not. The very bed you sleep in was made from such a tree. Experience anything interesting? Because you're a woman. No, I'm not a woman at all. I am now. I was cursed and I live in human form. Oh, you've squabbled again with your wife, hmm? Do not try me with insults, witch. You travel here alone to claim the castle, and yet send no message to her. I wonder, do you now plan to fight in her name or your own? Perhaps to prove yourself to her? I mean, it is a hard thing. I imagine to give to the one who replaced you as heir, and a woman too. A girl child you once bounced on your knee, hmm? My brother made his choice. Oh, and now he's gone. Here you are. With a castle drawing an army of men, you are absolutely not good. You fancy a sleeping draft? Haha. <laughs> It isn't poison. I like my head. I've no desire to see it on a spike. This will help you, I promise. So yeah, like I said, she really digs that knife in of, mm, your brother skipped over you, and now his little girl, your little niece, oh, she's bossing you around? He does end up passing out, and he thinks that she drugged him hardcore to do that, but he's uninjured in anything. By the way, they did cast Sir Simon Strong, the great uncle of uh, Lars Strong, and the person upkeeping Harrenhal. He will be played by Simon Russell. Lastly on Harrenhal, of course, we know that eventually war criminal Amond, who just loves his middle-aged woods witches, is going to love meeting her when he eventually gets around to it. Also, also, they didn't cast technically a middle-aged woman to play the woods witch, which is, you know, what she is in lore, just because they always cast women about a decade younger than what their character is, especially when it's middle-aged people, not kids, obviously, but once you get to middle-aged, eh, you're not gonna find a super sexy lady in her 40s banging a teenager on television. Generally, generally. They're gonna cast her down to, to make her look a little more sexy and appealing. 
And that's what they did here. But let's go back to right before Daemon heads to Harrenhal. So before Daemon takes off to do what we know Daemon does in Harrenhal, he goes to Rhaenyra and says, hey, I know a guy who can help you get a little bit of tit for tat with the old killing your son thing, which leads to blood and cheese. And if you're a little rusty on your blood and cheese lore, blood and cheese just refers to two individuals, blood and ex gold cloak who became a butcher after he beat a whore to death while raging drunk. Jesus, George. And cheese, who is a rat catcher aware of the tunnels throughout the Red Keep. They are hired by Daemon through the White Worm to kill one of Aegon II's kids. You know, an eye for an eye, just normal psychologically healthy Targaryen things, I guess. This leads to them sneaking in, rounding up Helena and her kids, and making her choose which one dies. Of course, she ends up picking the youngest Maelor, who we were supposed to meet next season, but they didn't cast the kids so far. There's been no leaks for it. So I'm assuming they're just going to have the twins, Jaehaerys and Jahera, and she's going to end up picking Jahera instead of the youngest, because of course she doesn't want Aegon II's heir to die. Part of Aegon II's claim to the throne is that direct male lineage. So if Jaehaerys dies, okay, the next person is Aemond, which still isn't bad, but it's better for Aegon II to have that direct line. So when she ends up picking not Aegon II's heir, either it's going to be Jahera or Maelor if they did actually cast him and they've kept it a secret. Blood and Cheese end up telling the, the kid that she picked, see, your mommy wants you dead. And instead, they end up killing the eldest boy, Aegon II's heir, Jaehaerys. After this, Helena just goes absolutely insane and refuses to be around her children and she, she just can't even take care of herself. And since Helena started out so stable in the first place, everything just goes downhill so quickly. This is a turning point for Aegon II as well. Before he was a drunk and yeah, he had particular tastes, but after the death of his heir, he becomes violent and angry drunk and just out of control. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the actor play Aegon II's descent into just all-consuming rage and everything is in, my half-sister is going to die. Now, while we aren't getting Aegon II's and Helena's youngest child, Maelor, most likely in the show, we have had leaks for casting of the missing youngest Allison child, Darren, so he will be in season two. He was in the Reach in season one. He might stay in the Reach in season one to help his family out with gathering support. And we know Aegon II believes that the Reach is going to be a slam dunk. His mother is a high tower. Of course, all of the Reach is going to support him and he gets a big shock when not all of the Reach is super happy about what he does and there are quite a few people on Rhaenyra's side. As for Aegon II and Helena's twins, they did recast them just because kids grow up so fast. Uh, it was blonde twins aged three to four years old for a filming of about a few days in April and June of this year. So already done, already filmed. If I were to take a stab at why Maelor is not going to be in the show is they just don't want to introduce him because toddler murder. Though, and if they want to get really dark with this, they could have Helena find out she's pregnant and they could do the whole thing with the baby. You know, maybe she loses her eldest son and she's pregnant and she miscarries the child as well because of this event. Or she can miscarry much later. Now, as for the descriptions of blood and cheese, I'm going to go over them really quick. Cheese, nicknamed Charlie, but I'm not going to call him his nickname. I'm just going to call him Cheese. So Cheese is described in leaked audition scripts as a servant of the castle. It appears in the audition he's leading a another man, presumed to be blood, into the castle to get to the kids. However, after Charlie gets the man in the castle, he refuses to help him up the stairs, saying, no, different servants work up there. I don't want to get in trouble. However, Cheese is eventually persuaded to lead the unknown character up the stairs. This leads to the scene with two men inside a royal chamber, but when a child isn't seen, Cheese wants to bail. However, the other man tells him, no prince, no gold, we keep searching. The end of the audition script is Cheese is ordered to search the next room while the man goes looking across the hall. Now, while this doesn't sound like 100% book lore, one, an audition tape, like I said before, they rarely are exactly the scene they're in. It's just to get a feel for the actor they're thinking about casting. Two, in the audition tape, we even have the presumed blood saying, I'm the blade, you're the map to cheese. So at the very least, they're just keeping that. It seemed like cheese was a lot more involved in this and just not someone they recruited, but I don't think these little changes matter. Or it's gonna be different in the show. Next, blood is being cast with the leaked audition tapes, he has been codenamed Boris. Blood is described as very tall, very violent, very tough, and very large. As he's described as big and brutal in the books, it seems like they're keeping his character pretty consistent. Also, this was weird. So for Blood, with the, the audition, they wanted someone with comedic chops, because I guess killing kids is hilarious. For Blood, they cast Sam C. Wilson. He's a six-foot-five individual 
noodles, so I'm pretty sure he's gonna have the presents uh, necessary for blood. Now, after this whole tragic, in quotes, event takes place, you know, where Aegon II is educated in grief. After this tragic event, there is a funeral procession in King's Landing. The funeral photos and progression is just beautiful. I loved all the leaks. I talked previously in multiple videos, I think in shorts now too, how Aegon II's new gold sigil and also the Faith of the Seven very clearly present at the funeral is amazing. Aegon II wanting a gold dragon to match the most beautiful dragon to ever exist, Sunfire, makes sense. Some of the backgrounds for his sigil look a dark green and not black like it's said to be in book lore. It would make sense if it was dark green to show his alliance, his ties to House High. Tower, who their sigil field is green. Now, as for seeing the faith of the seven uh, sigils on horses and them being very present in this funeral procession, that's to be understood. The high towers are in bed with the faith, which during the House of the Dragon is still based in Old Town, where the high towers call home. So it makes sense Alicent pulls them closer to her side and to the side of her son. Most of the seven kingdoms follow the faith of the seven due to the Andal's invasion of Westeros and them spreading their religion. The faith of the seven is so tied to the seven kingdoms at this point that even when Aegon the first invaded, he made sure to wed himself to the faith. I mean, this guy was already crowned by his sister wives and he allowed the faith to crown him again and anoint him because he understood religion is a tool. And most Valerians understood that. That's why they had a ton of gods on the freehold to the point where some people left because they're like, hey, we need to worship just one god. You, you guys are kind of crazy with your blasphemy over here. Now, I don't think Allison necessarily is using the faith as a tool exclusively. Alicent is a very pious woman. We saw her bring down all of the naughty artwork in the Red Keep that Viserys loves so much and put up the Faith of the Seven decorations. So this is a woman that has wedded herself to the Faith, believes in the Faith, draws it to her side, but she probably also knows, and so does her father Otto, that having the Faith on their side makes Aegon II seem much more legitimate. Now, just like I said, Alicent and Viserys' youngest child, Darren, has been cast. Her brother, Otto's son, Gwen Hightower, has also been cast and will be played by Freddie Fox in season two. I'm interested if he's just going to help Darren in the reach or if we're going to see him at the funeral procession at all. I haven't seen any leaked photos that show that, but if you have, let me know in the comment section down below. Now we know with a prince dead on each side, Jaehaerys and Luke, all hell breaks loose. The Riverlands, who, you know, can never catch a break, they can never catch a break, I swear to God. In there, particularly, they are plunged into a civil war. And this is because there are two Riverland houses that just hate each other so much, the Blackwoods and the Brackens. You may have remembered a scene in season one where those two houses went at it. The two houses instantly side with the opposite side and it just turns into an absolute bloodbath. This actually might be some of the brutal aftermath photos that were leaked online. There are prosthetic props and they are so graphic that I don't think I can put them up, but there's a lot of dead horses, a lot of dead Men. Next, let's talk about the Battle of Rook's Rest, which will occur after Blood and Cheese. That's already been filmed, and we've seen the aftermath when they bring Melee's, Rainy's Dragon, body back to King's Landing to parade through the streets. So at the Battle of Rook's Rest, Rhaenyra doesn't end up going. She sends Rainy's on her dragon. Unfortunately, Rainy's is killed, and then her dragon is decapitated, the head, and brought to King's Landing to be paraded through the streets. If they keep the leaked audio from the video that was all around on the internet. As they're parading the dragon, they're saying this is the work of Runera the Cruel, which of course the Greens are attempting to tie Runera to Megor the Cruel, a previously despised Targaryen king, which you know may or may not have been driven crazy by his first Hightower wife, but I'm um, not claiming anything in this video. Now tying Runera to Megor the Cruel is very clever on the Greens' part because they want to sow that fear to leech away any of her supporters. Another line you might hear in the show is, Megor the Cruel with teats. Of course, we know Rainey's dies and this turns Corlys sour on Rhaenyra, who didn't go herself. And you know, he might also think that she still murdered his son. That's kind of a double whammy. There are some leaked photos of Corlys rowing to shore to King's Landing and it looks like we're seeing him flip here, but it is much later in the season, I would imagine, but they just filmed it to get it out of the way. So to recap, in the first few episodes, we're gonna see Aegon and Helena lose a child, Daemon take Harrenhal, Rainey's die and her dragon head be taken to King's Landing, and some brutal fighting in the 
Riverlands. Okay, let's move on to dragon seeds. As we know in lore, and I believe we have seen in plenty of leaked photos and images, Rhaenyra's side the Blacks have more dragons than greens, but not enough riders. This leads to them attempting to find riders for their unclaimed dragons, including some wild dragons, which are just so friendly. Now, if you're confused what dragon seeds are, Targaryens practice right a first night up until King Jaehaerys the first outlawed it. The Targaryens were practicing this all the way back when they were just dragon lords on a rock in the sea. In the Seven Kingdoms, there's a lot of dragon seeds, people that have a wee bit of Targaryen blood in them because they're technically a bastard, even though the woman was married and taken before her husband could. But these dragon seeds are useful in the Dance of the Dragons for the Blacks, and in lore, we see Rhaenyra's son Jace promise wealth and power to any who can claim a dragon and fight on Rhaenyra's side. This leads to a lot of maimed and dead individuals who learn firsthand, you don't fuck around with dragons. Ask Quentin. Oh, wait, you can't. He's dead. The three wild dragons we will see in season two are Sheep Stealer, an ugly brown dragon born during King Jaehaerys the First Youth, who, as you can guess from the name, just loves sheep. Grey Ghost, a pale white beast that is very, very shy. And Cannibal, who loves warm hugs and had a layer littered with dozens of bones. From casting calls, we know that they filmed in June a large number of men 18 to 55 years old. The theory is that these amputee actors age 18 to 55, and they were looking for a lot of them. They said, hey, you got any buddies? Bring them along. One, they're either using these people for the aftermath of dragon battles where you're going to see a lot of mutilation and loss of limbs, or two, the aftermath of people trying to tame dragons, which there's going to be a lot of mutilation and loss of limbs. We have gotten some leaked photos of what looks like the dragon seeds near water. This includes what looks like Nettles, Hugh Hammer, Ulf the White, and others. I've labeled the actors' names who they should be playing, but keep in mind these are leaks, and as of me recording this video, they haven't been confirmed by HBO, so if you think they're playing actually different characters, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, this may be Adam of Hall, played by Clinton Liberty, a bastard of most likely the sea snake. Adam claims that he is the son of Lanor, but there are obvious holes there. Adam becomes legitimized by Rhaenyra and becomes the heir of Driftmark because Corlys begs her. He has nothing left. His son is dead. Luke, his heir is now dead. He needs something. And Rhaenyra goes, okay, fine, great. Adam of Hall's younger brother, Alan, is also been cast already, and he is also a bastard that is legitimized. Now, if you're looking at this image of Adam of Hall, and going, wow, this looks really dramatic. Think about it. This man is a bastard and through this terrible war becomes a dragon rider with his own dragon sea smoke previously written by his maybe uh, daddy, Lainor, though again, we know it's Corliss. He's legitimized and becomes the heir to a powerful noble house. Yeah, I'd be super stoked too. I think the dragon seed scenes are going to be a lot of fun to see. I'm really excited to see Cannibal. Oh no. But let's move on to adapting the Battle of the Gullet. We know the Battle of the Gullet will be seen in season two. We also know that Emma de Arcy's Rhaenyra was filmed with her two younger children, Aegon and Viserys, played by toddlers currently. Now we know in lore, and it's actually matching up pretty well with the leaks we have, that Rhaenyra sends them, being escorted by Jace, onto a ship to go to Pentos so that they can be safe until the war is over. You, you don't want your little toddlers running around because toddler death seems to be rampant. Well, they get on the ship and and the Greens have brought in the Triarchy to deal with Rhaenyra and their ships. So they come up the gullet, attack the ship Jace and his little brothers Aegon and Viserys are on, and it's brutal. Honestly, I would love if they ended with the Battle of the Gullet because it's such a depressing way to once again end a season. Okay, lastly, on filming, I just want to do little tidbits. We've seen some amazing images of Aegon's cavalry on the march. Oh my god, I just, I love his sexy gold sigil. That's the only compliment I'm going to give the greens. They have a bitchin' sigil. From the leaks, Rhaenyra actually might not have her weird, colorful, just icky sigil she has in the books. It looks like she's gonna have a red dragon with a chainmail background, but she could do both. I think in a live action show, it might look a little goofy going with her quartered sigil from book lore, but they, they could make it work. We also have in the red keep, Lars Strong and Amond also outside looking over the railing. Lars, of course, is just gonna be wheeling 
controlling and dealing. He's part of the uh, small council. He's manipulating Allison, getting his uh, foot fetish taken care of. Amon from these leaks is executing prisoners, probably those that hold on to Rhaenyra as the rightful queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Okay, so that is what I wanted to talk about for filming so far. They are going to keep going for a few more months, so I'm excited to see what is leaked. A lot of it's going to be inside a studio, so it might be kind of just a little bit here or there. But you know, like, subscribe, and let me know what you're looking forward to in season two of House of the Dragon. For me, it's Amon tapping a middle-aged uh, woods witch. I just want to see him get all up in there. You go, Amon. Older women, they can be a lot of fun. Chase the